Hey, you wonderful people. My name's Clayton, and today we're going to talk about some of the negative effects of cannabis. To start with, I want to preface this entire video with no one has ever died from cannabis. This is because to die, a human being would need to ingest about 1,500 pounds of cannabis in 15 minutes. So when looking at the harm to benefit ratio that doctors look at when prescribing medications, cannabis research should be at the top of the list. Unfortunately, as I will mention many times, more research is definitely needed on this plant. Cannabis disrupts our fight or flight response, which could sometimes cause anxiety and paranoia, which may lead to sickness. Generally, this is more common in strains that are higher in THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol. If you constantly find yourself in the uncomfortable state of anxiousness or paranoia, patients generally find that strains higher in CBD, or cannabidiol, can help. I recommend keeping a journal to document any of the effects that you may feel, whether they be positive or negative. Knowing the strain name and concentration will definitely help. Sickness from cannabis can come in another form as well, called cannabinoid hyperemesis, or CHS. This results in severe abdominal pain and vomiting that could last several days and tends to repeat itself every month or so. Patients experiencing CHS have found relief with a hot shower or bath. Now, I want to follow that up with. Cannabinoid hyperemesis is very similar to another disease called cyclic vomiting syndrome, or CVS. Research on both CHS and CVS are very limited, and currently the only way to tell the difference is to discontinue your cannabis use and see if it helps. More research is needed. Mental health and psychosis is one of the biggest questions and arguments surrounding cannabis use. Studies have shown that the more cannabis you use, the greater your risk for psychosis. These studies also talk about how cannabis doesn't necessarily cause schizophrenia, but it can worsen symptoms. There is discussion about how the increasing amounts of THC in cannabis today could be the leading contributor to psychotic episodes, but more research is needed. Now, because we know that cannabis affects neurotransmitters in our brains, we know that cannabis has an effect on brain development. These cannabinoids affect parts of your brain that are responsible for memory and problem solving. So it's usually recommended to stay away from cannabis while your brain is developing. But more research is needed. Now, let's talk about cannabis and cancer. Studies have shown that smoking large amounts of cannabis can lead to decreased pulmonary functions and may play a part in some head and neck cancers. However, there's no association to oral cancers. This means that people who smoke cannabis but don't smoke cigarettes are just as likely to get lung cancer as people who don't smoke anything at all. However, bronchitis is very common for heavy cannabis users. So, more research is needed. Julie Holland, psychopharmacologist, psychologist, and author of The Pot Book, says, The fact that smoking pot is illegal, and therefore must be hidden, ends up creating a layer of psychopathology that wasn't necessarily there to start. The obsessive rituals involved in hiding and covering up the shame that stems from the secrecy, the anxiety created from the clandestine requirements, all make the drug-taking experience more adrenaline-charged, and thereby potentially more reinforcing and addicting. She goes on later to say, Addiction is manifest by a compulsive desire to do something, even though we know we shouldn't. What Julie is saying is that hiding your cannabis use could potentially be the most dangerous part about this drug, other than getting caught with it in the United States. So, if you're currently self-medicating with cannabis, or it's a medicine that you'd like to try, talk to your family doctor or a trusted medical professional, and most importantly, educate yourself. Next week, I'm answering a question that I get almost every day. How do I get a prescription for cannabis? So make sure to tune in next Tuesday and Thursday for a special two-part episode on how to obtain cannabis legally in Canada and on how to choose a licensed producer. I believe the biggest thing this world needs before legalization is education. Let's educate them together. Please like and share this video for everyone to see. And if you're new to my channel, check out some of the other videos I got here too. And to stay up to date on the most current videos, hit that subscribe button and the little bell beside it. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.